In 1981, Disney acquired the rights to Gary K. Wolf's novel, Who Censored Roger Rabbit? in which a fictional cartoon rabbit exists in a world where humans lived among comic strip characters. The project was shelved and traction was lost until Michael Eisner brought Jeffrey Katzenberg on board to head feature film development at Walt Disney Pictures in 1984. Katzenberg put the film back into production as a co-production with Amblin Entertainment, which involved producers like Kathleen Kennedy, Frank Marshall, and of course, Steven Spielberg. Eisner had previously worked with Spielberg at Paramount, where he was one of the few executives who fully supported Spielberg's vision of Raiders of the Lost Ark. However, in order to bear the burden of Roger Rabbit's high production cost, Amblin agreed to fund 50% of the film's budget in exchange for 50% of the film's box office receipts and merchandising rights. Anything involving the character had to be approved by Spielberg and Amblin. After the runaway success that was Back to the Future, Spielberg was able to recruit Robert Zemeckis to direct the film. Disney released the film under its Touchstone label, and it went on to become the second highest grossing film of 1988, behind Rain Man. The film won several Oscars and became an instant classic. The mania started almost immediately. Major marketing tie-ins and promotional fare was created, with computer games, McDonald's tie-ins, which become a Disney standard, and of course, action figures, board games, and becoming a spokesperson for Diet Coke. Roger, what are you doing here? Please, Eddie. I just came to see Jessica and to have a Diet Coke. Diet Coke. She's a nut that drives a toon loony. <laughs> Diet Coke and Roger Rabbit. Disney rushed theatrical shorts into production. Three were eventually produced, entitled Tummy Trouble, Roller Coaster Rabbit, and Trail Mix-Up. Disney's first vote of confidence in the character came in 1988, when Roger Rabbit was included as a major character in Mickey's 60th birthday celebration on NBC. Soon after, he began to take over the theme parks, appearing in multiple parades and shows as a prominent character. He was featured in Disney sing-along films and became a regular meet and greet. <laughs> my name in life, I'm the star of my own show, Makeup! <laughs> can celebrate with Roger every day, now through January 2nd at Disneyland. In 1991, Disney's MGM Studios opened to the public, and Roger Rabbit was there to make his mark. Not long after, a new section of the park was proposed where current day Sunset Boulevard sits. This area would be called Roger Rabbit's Hollywood. It would have featured an area similar to the Maroon Cartoon Studios in the film. It would have also featured a reproduction of the Acme Warehouse, which would have served as an entrance for one of the rides. A New York Times article stated, This will be a kind of toontown where, as in the movie, only cartoon characters may live. Visitors will meet with the movie's eponymous cartoon hero. Originally it was envisioned as a Disneyland edition, the project was quickly moved to Disney's MGM Studios in order for California to make way for its upcoming Westcott expansion, which would soon become Disney's California Adventure. The terminal bar where Dolores works in the film would have served as a fully functioning restaurant in the land. Several rides were also developed. One was Baby Herman's Runaway Baby Buggy, which would have been a dark ride based on the first Roger Rabbit short, Tummy Troubles, in which Robber and Baby Herman would have traveled through a hospital with guests riding along in an oversized baby buggy. However, as soon as it was announced, numerous sources complained that Disney was making light of a hospital and its patients. Another ride suggested was based off the short Roller Coaster Rabbit, which would have been the first traditional roller coaster in the park. A Toontown trolley simulator similar to Star Tours was also developed, where guests would be surrounded by screens going on a red car trolley through Toontown in Old Hollywood, where Roger would periodically dent the roof. And finally, a dark ride in which guests would travel with Benny the Cab was developed. Ultimately, this became Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, where it was placed in Mickey's Toontown in the proposed area for the original Roger Rabbit's Hollywood at Disneyland. In 1988, Mickey's Toontown was added to Walt Disney World, where guests could go in Mickey and Minnie's house. It has since been altered drastically. In 1993, this land was added to Disneyland in California, where Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin is located today. In 1996, Tokyo Disneyland received a similar treatment. Well, the biggest challenge in basing an attraction off a film is that the attraction has to f carry forward the spirit of the film and the excitement of the film and the kind of the, uh, the whole ambiance of the film. And, and, and uh, Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin does that. The land in Disney's MGM Studios was never built for a myriad of reasons. Chief among those was the fact that Disney had been developing a sequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit in which the villain was a Nazi. 
After working on Schindler's List, Steven Spielberg felt like the subject matter was totally uneven and would not approve the film. Interest from Eisner and the public began to dwindle, eventually ending in Roger Rabbit's disappearance as a character from the parks in 1992. Disney attempted to create its own Roger Rabbit named Bonkers T. Bobcat, who was a police officer teamed up with a human partner. However, all the humans were also animated and the characters never really took off. In the end, only a few things beyond Toontown survived in the Disney parks. Previously, Disney MGM Studios' Backlot Tour, which has since been removed, had a large collection of relics from the film, including a prop warehouse and several on-screen vehicles and photo opportunities. A Jessica Rabbit store existed for a period in the Pleasure Island section next to Walt Disney World's Downtown Disney. Currently, only a billboard in Disney MGM Studios and a window featuring an ad for Eddie Valiant next to a silhouette of Roger can be seen above the main streets. Roger appears every now and then for anniversaries and sometimes Easter surprises, even recently seen with Jessica Rabbit in Tokyo Disneyland, but it's a rarity. Eventually in 2003, the Disney Pop Century Hotel erected a large statue of Roger Rabbit in its 80s section, next to a Rubik's Cube and other forgotten gems of a bygone era. Party. Please, everybody, we're 